Hello, and welcome to another session of our digital slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, our program, part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a courtesy of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter. I'm coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City, a home of the uh, hopefully uh, soon to be famous Stevenson Cancer Center uh, and an NIH designated cancer center. Our case today, however, does not come from the realms of cancer, but uh, from the, some of the considerations uh, associated with it. Uh, it's a 45-year-old man who's experienced rectal pain and intermittent bleeding um, on uh, endoscopy, sigmoidoscopy. Uh, it's noted that he has sort of an inflammatory ulcerative appearance in some areas of the uh, rectum here, uh, just uh, uh, proximal to the uh, anal papillae. Um, and uh, so in that sort of a situation and sort of an inflammatory ulcerative, uh, not really mass-like, but almost mass-like lesion, one would uh, wonder what are the inflammatory processes that should be considered in this anorectal area? Well, of course, we wanna consider uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Ulcerative colitis can certainly uh, present as uh, rectal ulcers. Crohn's disease can have uh, perirectal abscesses, the perirectal inflammation, uh, fissure formation. Uh, and certainly uh, those sorts of uh, anal fissures and things of that sort could be considered. Uh, there is an entity called inflammatory cloacogenic polyp, uh, which is really probably part of uh, one of the prolapse syndromes the, uh, where mechanical ischemic tra uh, trauma falls under the rubric of solitary rectal ulcer syndrome. Uh, hemorrhoids with secondary ulceration or ischemic changes can give you inflammatory processes. Various infectious disorders, of, um, uh, particularly in uh, um, uh, HIV positive individuals can uh, create inflammatory processes. Uh, Cowden's disease uh, comes into the differential uh, principally because it uh, can look an awful lot like these uh, inflammatory uh, cloaca cloacogenic polyps or solitary rectal ulcer syndrome. And then there are certain medications uh, that are supplied as suppositories, uh, notably ergotamine, uh, that can produce inflammatory changes and ulceration uh, in this area. So uh, oftentimes we'll get uh, just very superficial biopsies, uh, such as these, as we can see here. Um, and these have been uh, somewhat oriented using uh, uh, some uh, coagulant uh, gel foam and so forth to try to preserve the architecture. Uh, and what we can see here is uh, relatively normal appearing glands, uh, a little bit of uh, sort of uh, eosinophilia to the stroma, maybe some irregularity of the spacing of the glands, but not too much uh, here to suggest uh, what may be going on. We do see some surface erosive changes here uh, with loss of surface epithelium, some reactive changes. Um, and then over here, we can see more of this sort of fibroplasia around some of the rectal glands. And notice the altered shape of some of these glands, a little bit more stellate and so forth. This isn't very revealing, uh, this particular biopsy, and might be signed out rather uh, descriptively, uh, rather nonspecifically. Uh, we might say mucosal erosion and uh, some uh, glandular distortion, um, minimal inflammation, no neoplasia, and so forth. Um, and the circumstances in this particular disorder uh, can be quite variable. Uh, another uh, biopsy uh, might be taken, and in this case, uh, here we can see a little bit more uh, surface erosion and inflammatory changes. Uh, here we see nice ulceration uh, changes with a little bit of almost exudative surface. And then notice here how the uh, glands can be distorted, uh, variable shapes and sizes and orientations, uh, all coupled with this uh, surface sort of cap of inflammatory changes um, and not uh, too much in the way of glandular uh, dysplasia or anything like, like that. Although sometimes the uh, glandular epithelium here can look a little bit atypical, start to look a little bit hyperplastic, maybe stratified even. Uh, and so we may even begin to consider uh, various uh, other uh, possibilities such as the dysplasia or villus adenoma. Uh, notice here, however, that we can see little strands of smooth muscle uh, splayed up here into the uh, lamina propria, uh, which is a uh, real key to un catching this diagnosis um, because these indicate that there's been some mechanical distortion 
and trauma to the mucosa that's uh, resulted in a compensatory uh, smooth muscle metaplasia. Notice here we also have uh, some pan-S cells that can occur here uh, as part of this inflammatory reaction. And this does not necessarily put us in the camp of uh, ulcerative colitis or something of that sort. Now, occasionally in this disorder, uh, we will have actual polyps, such as the uh, cloacogenic type polyp. But the hallmarks of solitary rectal ulceration are mucosal ulceration with some sort of uh, secondary villus uh, hyperplastic change. Of course, at a very early stage, you may see only this, or with a limited sample, you may see only this. Uh, sometimes this becomes prominent and looks almost for the world like a villus adenoma. Uh, additionally, hyperplasia of the crypts, elongation, dilatation, and uh, some people have described diamond-shaped uh, glands as being helpful uh, to indicate that. We've highlighted the fibromuscular hyperplasia, uh, and then sometimes you can see a thickened muscularis mucosa with this splaying uh, into the lamina propria. Capillaries can be ectatic, inflammatory changes within the polyp, fairly minimal, um, and then sometimes pseudomembranes. Occasionally, later on, uh, this uh, pulsion and torsion process can result in um, dilated cystic glands deep in the muscularis or deep in the submucosa uh, that look very much like colitis cystica profunda. Uh, so let's show you some of those uh, types of changes here in a more florid situation. Um, again, we can see <clears throat> uh, this is anal rectal junction. We have squamous mucosa here. We have uh, colonic anal uh, type mucosa here. Um, and we can see some intermingling of this. We do have some vascular ectasia. So yes, there may be a little bit of hemorrhoidal change, but the predominant change is here along the surface. And we can see uh, right off that we have this uh, inflammatory membrane along the surface uh, with this uh, ulceration and hyperplasia and increased excretion of mucin. Uh, notice the hyperplastic and villiform uh, nature of the uh, glands, very perpendicular, elongated. Um, uh, there can be granulation tissue type areas, as you see here, uh, very dilated ectatic capillaries that begin to look like granulation tissue. Um, and then notice how the smooth muscle gets pulled up into the mucosa in this very perpendicular fashion. Uh, so that's the splaying of the muscularis mucosa. Uh, now here we have this uh, uh, mucinous chain, or this is fat, I guess, down here. Uh, so we don't have the deep glandular component here, uh, but we have the other features uh, that we've described. Um, in this situation. Let's look at another example. Uh, as this progresses and becomes more florid, <clears throat> we may get a complete elimination, uh, obliteration of the underlying mucosa uh, and be left with really a granulation tissue type polyp. Uh, although here we can see a little bit of residual of this uh, distorted mucosa uh, with the uh, exuberant uh, granulation tissue type uh, polyp uh, extending outward and no residual identifiable um, uh, colonic uh, glands or rectal uh, mucosa. Uh, this was in a case which had other areas more typical and more classically diagnostic uh, in other areas. With these prolapse syndromes, uh, it may depend upon the, whether the prolapse is entirely circumferential or partial, uh, what parts of the uh, mucosa are being uh, prolapsed and causing this problem. Uh, as to whether or not you get an exuberant ulcer, a, a polypoid reaction, uh, or more ischemic type changes. Uh, let's look at another slide here illustrating nicely this uh, cystitis glandularis uh, profunda type change uh, as we see these glands deep down into the differential, or deep down into the uh, submucosa. Uh, in this situation, one would uh, uh, have to consider the possibility of um, mucinous carcinoma or adenocarcinoma of the uh, uh, perianal uh, glands uh, because of this uh, presentation here. Now, some of these may be uh, uh, anal type glands. Others, however, uh, may be just uh, entrapped uh, colonic type glands that have been pushed down into here uh, as well. Again, we can see this uh, uh, splaying of the muscularis mucosa and pulling of it up 
uh, into the uh, lamina propria uh, with uh, resultant uh, or with secondary hyperplasia of the surface of the uh, mucosa and some uh, erosion of the surface. So uh, quite a different appearance, but still within the uh, category of consideration. Uh, here we can see the ulceration, uh, so that it still qualifies under the uh, ulcer component of solitary rectal ulcer syndrome. So this gives you an idea of some of the spectrum of the disease that we can see. Uh, one last uh, example, again, small, small biopsies. Uh, here we can see uh, areas of this inflammatory uh, pseudomembrane type of exudate, ulceration, a little bit of granulation tissue, uh, variable splaying of the muscularis mucosa, fibroplasia of the lamina propria here uh, in there, and in this other fragment here, uh, we'll see that even more. Uh, you can see here uh, some of these irregularly shaped glands, uh, and here very marked fibroplasia as uh, this smooth muscle gets pulled right up to the surface in some areas of this uh, uh, polypoid uh, tissue. So um, a broad spectrum of uh, changes that can be seen in solitary rectal ulcer syndrome. Uh, we'll post the uh, link to these slides so you can study them at your leisure um, in the comments and uh, hope that you'll uh, find that helpful. So our final sign out diagnosis today, solitary rectal ulcer syndrome uh, one of the prolapse uh, syndromes of the uh, 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 large bowel and uh, perirectal uh, tissues. Um, if that was helpful to you, we hope you'll like this video. Uh, certainly hope that you'll also subscribe so that you don't miss future releases on our channel. Um, and also, we'd love to hear your comments. So reach out to me either directly or leave a comment below on uh, your experiences uh, what has entered into the differential when you've uh, encountered this uh, type of lesion um, in uh, your practice or uh, training. So until next time, thanks for joining us.